Wednesday at 4 on Fox 25. On Judge Hatchet, the Rays say that their dog sitter Edo is responsible for the horrific injury suffered by their dog Cashmere. He said this is defective. Is this the collar the dog had on the day that he was injured? And when Edo reveals the unusual fate of the Rays' dead dog Ziggy, Linda is devastated. It's a little sick to keep your dog in the freezer. For you to bring that up is just about as low as this lawsuit. Don't miss the outrageous backhaul incident that will haunt this couple forever. <laughs> I did it to save your life. Who threw the first blow? He did. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> There's gonna be hell to pay. Whatever. You want me to come off this bench? You are a no good, jive ass, trifling man. Don't get me testifying in here today. Edo Gabay is suing Linda Ray for $515. He claims he spent on vet bills while he was dog-sitting Linda's dogs. Edo says he was walking Linda's and her husband Randall Ray's dog, Cashmere, when she saw a bird and ran after it. Edo says Cashmere's collar broke and she ran into the street and was hit by a car. Edo says he had to rush Cashmere to the pet hospital, where he was forced to pay the bill out of his own pocket. Edo says Linda now refuses to repay him, and he's outraged. He says that if Linda had provided him with a secure dog collar, Kashmir never would have been injured. Ito is here with his girlfriend, Allison Longin, who is taking care of the dogs with him. Linda says Ito is crazy if he thinks she'd ever repay him for injuring her dog. Linda says there was absolutely nothing wrong with Kashmir's collar and claims Ito must have put the collar on wrong after bathing the dog. She and her husband, Randall, say they should have taken the dogs to a kennel and should never have let Ito convince them that he could take better care of their pets. Linda says she was already distraught when her other precious pooch, Ziggy, died over a year ago and says that since Kashmir's accident, her life has been a living hell. I reviewed this complaint and I understand that the plaintiff is here basically suing and saying that you are entitled to money that you paid to have medical attention for the dog that belonged to the defendant. That's right. All right, tell me what happened. Well, you know, initially, let me start off by saying I'm just here to collect the money that I'm owed. They gave me a faulty collar and uh, the dog got... It's not true. That's a lie. Give well, me a faulty collar. The dog got hit by a car. I had to give it immediate attention. Put my neck in, out in line and uh, put down $500. And I just want to get that money back. All right. And so, and he has provided services for you before. Is that correct? Yes. Before he went away to college. All right. All right. And on how many occasions, approximately? Oh, um, several. Several. So he, there's been an ongoing relationship, and he's been responsible for your dogs before. Yes, in our home. All right. All right. Well, the first time was in okay. your home. I stayed there the following three times, I believe it was. I, uh, I only lived a couple minutes in them, so I'd come twice a day, feed them, take them outside, take care of them. But um, the first time I ever went to their house, it was absolutely filthy. The dogs That's had the run of the place. The dogs have a run of the place. There is literally piss, urine, soaking into the hardwood floors to the point where they're rotting out. There's rotting marks because the dogs go in the same areas all the time. That the house stinks. Absolutely unbelievably They go on fault. the papers, they're trying to get the papers. Okay, that's only my opinion of it, and uh, if I had a friend of mine here, we could attest to that. We call it the dog pound, because it's so disgusting. So the most recent time with dog staff, they initially just wanted me to pick up their dogs from the kennel and bring it to their house in Newton. They uh, offered me $20, and I just said it wasn't worth my that's while. That's not true either, not true. it's $40. They offered me 20 I asked for 40 and they said, all right, we can do 40 but then we just started talking. That conversation evolved, and I offered to take care of the dogs all week. Because you don't want to put your dogs in a kennel. It's like a last resort. Yes, we do. So I, the, the original, the original a, arrangement that you had thought about doing, Mr. and Mrs. Ray, was to put the dogs in the kennel and ask that the plaintiff come and pick the dogs up. Is that correct? Yeah. From the kennel and deliver them back home. Right. Yes, we, we had used this kennel before. Before, okay. many so times before. why did you change your plan because and we have him take care of the dogs that week. We had a message on our answer machine from Ito that he wanted to take care of, of our dogs. That's not true. At that point, I didn't even know what the circumstances, what they wanted me to do. I have that tape so at I'll, home. I have the tape. The message was actually very message. mundane. Yes, the I message do. was simply, uh, yes. hi, Linda, yes. this is home. Ito. Uh, I understand you I want some help with your puppies. Should we go oh, to your right. house? Smell the I mean, let's not get bogged yes. down yes. on yes. this. Yes. Because but he's lying ultimately, about that. But ultimately, there was a change of plan. Instead of putting the dogs in the kennel, 
you ask Ido to care for the dogs. Now, we were led to believe that these dogs, first of all, would never be out on the streets of Boston under any circumstance. There's no way in hell I would have let these dogs on the streets of Boston where they might have get, get, you know, attacked by a pit bull, She's Rottweiler. Me about your language. Who knows what is down there? Don't, all right. Don't in the book of the phone, they told me the Who knows what's down there? But he's going to walk the dogs. backyard. And that's fine. We spoke right. on the phone. They said the kennel was going to walk the dogs twice a day, and they expected that same from us. No. And they, and said, then they walk sent the dogs. their two leashes. That's a Why lie. do you send leashes How? if you don't want us to walk I your dogs? Because you talk. twice a day. That's not a lie. When Judge Hatchet returns, Edo cuts to the bone as he recounts Kashmir's accident in gory detail. A car came to a screeching halt and hit Kashmir. So I picked her up, and she was bleeding a good amount. You could see her paw was really in rough shape. And later, when the case turns to the unusual preservation after the death of the Ray's previous pet, Ziggy, Ido shows just how cold he can be. Ziggy is dead. <laughs> Where is Ziggy, freezer? by the way? Isn't he in the freezer frozen? For you to bring that up is just about as low as this lawsuit. Ido Gabay is suing Linda and Randall Ray for $515. Ido says he spent on veterinary bills while he and his girlfriend, Allison Longin, were taking care of the Ray's dogs, and one of the pets, Kashmir, broke loose from its collar and got hit by a car. The Rays are outraged by Ido's claim. They say there was absolutely nothing wrong with the collar, and it was his fault their precious dog got injured. Linda says she was already devastated by the death of her dear dog, Ziggy, over a year ago, and that Kashmir's terrible accident was almost too much to handle. The Rays say there's no way they're going to reimburse Ido a dime. Now you have the dogs. Right. And you have the dogs, the responsibility of the dogs for a week, right. and the agreement is that you would be paid how much it, for Well, that? here's how we agreed on it. He said it was going to be about $25 a day for both dogs, mm -hmm. which was a lie, because I called the kennel, and it actually turned out to it's be 41, to 30, you know. $41 for no. both me. dogs, $20 a dog. That's a lie. Turn on the bill. That's a lie. I have, the can I have Tureen's we statement have right here. right here. All right. Well, I'm not going to get bogged down on that. I will okay. see the Either statement. Either way, we agreed on a, on a monetary no value for the service. And I, that's what we paid for three dogs. Ziggy is dead. <clears throat> Where is Ziggy, freezer? by the way? Isn't he in the freezer, frozen? Yes. Yes, he back, certainly back, back, is. Judge, 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 judge. I'd like, let's I'd like let's to, not, I'd let's like not to talk rub okay. salt into My a wound, obviously. My dog died on June 2nd, 2000, at 935 in my arms. He's the oldest dog, and he, we intend to take him with us when we move. We intend to move. And we want him to be buried with on our property. And for you to bring that up, my dog that I had for 15 and a half years is just about as low as this lawsuit that you're bringing. Listen, I just want to get my now, money back. It, can I just say something? I, I would like I to really, say one I really, thing. You didn't have to go there. About I, the I would other just like to say just one thing. be quiet. I, I would like to. I said, be quiet. I'm dealing with this issue now. This woman obviously is in pain. It has nothing to do with this lawsuit. I wanted to apologize. Just a moment. I'm talking to Ido right now. The problem is that, you know, you went to a place about a dog that she's lost. I mean, that wasn't fair. Well, you know, you know it's what? like sticking a knife in and turning it. I, I feel mean, like it's I'm, not fair. I feel like I've been jabbed a couple times by him, too. So, so then you then turn around in a place that you know that she's very much in pain about. And then you just take a punch at her? Well, I, I just think it's a little sick to keep your dog in the freezer. But that's not your call. True. It's hers. True. It's her My relationship. Doesn't but I think it just shows how overly emotionally attached she is to her dogs. And why she had a breakdown once I told them the situation of what happened. He well, has no let's compassion fast for dogs forward. at all. Let me get I have to this two dogs. Time. I'm a dog owner. Right, I Allison, love my dogs. you said that you wanted to apologize. What were you saying? I can definitely have compassion for you know, her pain with her right. dog loss. So I would just, you know, I don't want to be up here looking like a couple of monsters or anything. Well, I and appreciate you saying that. Let's move on. The agreement then is that you're keeping the dogs for how long for this it was time? Nine days, oh, I nine think it days was. and that you were going to be compensated at a rate of what? $225. All right, $225. All right, so obviously something happened when you, the dog was in your care. Talk to me about what happened. Well, I took the dog out. It was on a Wednesday. I took Geronimo and Kashmir. She wrote a letter to the court magistrate saying I took all four dogs out at the same time, which is wrong. I don't know if you want to see this. No, I'm fine. Go ahead. All right. Took him out, and uh, Kashmir ran out in the middle of the street after a bird, whipped her head around. The collar flew off. I tried to pull her back. Collar flew off. She kept on running out in the middle of the street. A car came to a screeching halt 
and hit Kashmir. At that point, she kind of jumped away from the car, started squealing and running towards me. So I picked her up, and she was bleeding a good amount. You could see her paw was really in rough shape, her whole left paw. So I brought um, Geronimo back to the house. You know, I banged in the window. Allison came out. She saw what happened, started crying immediately. I gave her Geronimo so I could just deal with Kashmir. Right. Ran across the street to the vet. When I uh, brought her to the vet, uh, she ran some preliminary tests, deciding, you know, how serious the damage is, if there's any shock, trauma, and uh, she determined that it wasn't going to be life-threatening if the situation got taken care of. She was having a good amount of blood loss, but she could walk around and seemed alert. I and um, came back Friday. She said Kashmir was doing fine. Um, she was putting weight on it, which is also in the letter from the she vet. She was not putting weight on it for our vets, and I have my vet. Well, I have the vet that saw her two days afterwards said she's well, putting also, weight on as, it. Well, also, it's important, too, that I get on the record that there's also a counterclaim now that the Rays That's have right. for $98.83 based on medical treatment that you say you had to get for the dog after this incident and along with the collars, the plus dog sorry, collar. Plus the pain and suffering for me having to and Randall having to take the dog from the bed down to her water, back up to the bed, down to her food, back up to the bed, down to the papers because she could not go outside. She could not stand on that That's leg at true. all. That's not true. That's not true at all. When Judge Hatchet continues. The Rays unleash a critical piece of evidence, but who will end up in the doghouse? He said this is defective. Would you like to look at this? This that is not, that was not, not the collar. collar. The collar got lost. Is this the collar that yes. the dog had on the day that he was injured? And then you won't want to miss Edo's brutal backhaul comment about the Rays' dead dog, Ziggy. Stop it. <laughs> Honey, you'll never have to see him again. He lied. Closed captioning provided by... On the next Judge Hatchet, a drug-addicted dad gets a lesson in death. What we're going to be doing here is creating a funeral. Can his wife face her own addiction? So if I had you tested right now, there would be no alcohol in the system? No. On the next Judge Hatchet. Does your ex have money or possessions of yours that he or she refuses to return? If your ex won't return your belongings or money and you want to settle things in court, call 1-866-HATCHET. Ido Gabay and his girlfriend Allison Longin say they were not at fault when the dog they were watching for Linda and Randall Ray broke loose from its collar and got hit by a car. They say they were considerate enough to rush the dog to the vet and are demanding that the Rays reimburse them for the $515 in veterinary bills. Linda and Randall say the collar was fine and that Ido must have put it on their dog Kashmir incorrectly. They refuse to pay Ido a dime and are even countersuing him for further medical bills and the pain and suffering involved with caring for their precious pet. We paid the bill and they returned from, from their well, trip. Well, Randall called me when he got home and um, you know, I told him what happened, the accident <sighs> and what have you. At first he was very compassionate and understanding. He said, you know, I've told Linda repeatedly to get a new collar, to replace the collar at Kashmir, because it has lot. fallen off That's before. That's a lot. You never said that? Never. Randy, you never said that? He told no. me that as soon as he got off the phone with them. No. That she I hear lie coming out of your mouth every two minutes. Let me hear from it you, Mr. Ray, us to hear him say that. Because what was your recollection of this conversation? Home, please. We got home. No dogs came running down those stairs to greet us. Now we went to the kitchen. She was already upset. We came to the kitchen table and found this note, which basically says, I didn't want to leave. What did it say? You know, I do not want to leave Kashmir and Geronimo here by themselves. Please call me when you return, which I did. Mm -hmm. He started saying, well, there was a little problem. There was an accident. The minute Linda heard the word accident, she went hysterical. All right, she was sitting beside me on the table when I was on the phone. And I said, you know, well, just, you know, get it back, you know, fine, you know, whatever. We want the dogs, uh, you know, very upset, okay? And he's thinking, well, she got off the collar. I said, well, you know, she kind of, you know, in the past, right, these dogs don't get walked anymore because of my wife's shoulder problem. Okay, they go outside. So what happens is we get them together, and if we say the word leash, they know the word leash, and they'll come running into the foyer. You take the collar, you put the collar on the dog, okay? Right. And if it's too loose, they'll slip their head out of it, okay? So you have to hold them there and get it so it tightens so that it fits, okay? And then you put the leash on it, 
and then you take. I think we all have. Uh, no I think we all dogs. know that, Mr. Well, well he's saying this. Dogs dogs he said this is defective. Would you like to look at this? as that, that was not the collar. The collar got lost. That collar that they had. Was is this the very collar? Old. I'm not going to look at this collar unless this is the collar that the dog had on this, that day. You can, no, you can it's see, not. You can see pictures of the dog with a red collar. Is this the collar? There's Listen no way. to the question. Is this the collar that yes. the dog had on the day that he was injured? In fact, you can see where it's injured. been dirty. I washed she's it. Lying. Oh, she's lying. This is all set she's up. Totally this is all lying. set up. That collar that was That collar was frayed on. It, she's lying. That was tricky. You went and bought another red collar. It's kind of brand that new, though. Lie. The other one was a lot dirtier. It was a lot dirtier? That's right. Oh, it was frayed. The other one was frayed and torn. It wasn't a new collar like that, ma'am. It is not a new collar. That's not? That was about a month old with some, uh, maybe charcoal rubbed into it? Please, you know. I took an You're oath lying, to really. tell the truth. Who cares? Who cares? They're and lying. his name is not Ray. His name is Randall. You can't even get his name straight. Ray, Randall, Randall. Hold on. Oh, come on, you know. Just, we don't need, we don't need I have sarcasm. I don't need it. I'm not going right. to have it. If it were a situation where Ido either took the dog to the vet or decided that he would just kind of tend to the dog until you got back, surely, surely you and Mr. Ray would want the dog to be taken to the vet. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. Now, can you prove, that's the question, can you, can you say here today that he was negligent in not placing this collar on in a way that the dogs got hit? Yes, I can. All right, tell me what your evidence is. My evidence is the collar. I have a picture here of Cashmere with the collar, with Ziggy, who has since died. It is a red collar. It is the collar that, of this collar, and that it collar? is this collar. Oh, Let me see this. So now, what is this supposed to prove to me, Miss Ray? Like that that yeah. this is the same collar that was that was on the dog two years ago. That car looks pretty good for two years. Because they don't we wear don't it all the time. We don't wash them anymore. They go in the backyard. Yeah, yeah, looks yeah. pretty good. That, just good enough. that okay. gets used for them to go to Rothwood for we shots. We had the collar. We never gave it back to you. You know what? Well, I can't, I can't I mean, accept this as evidence because this isn't really I mean, I have a picture with two dogs. I have something that vaguely looks like a red collar. When Judge Hatchet returns. Just when you thought this case was laid to rest, Ido takes one last stab at the Rays. Stop it. <laughs> Honey, you'll never have to see him again. He lied. Addicted Dad gets a lesson in death. What we're going to be doing here is creating a funeral. On the next Judge Hatchet. Is your family in crisis and you need help? If you have a family member who's in trouble or you're dealing with a family conflict that you can't resolve, call 1-866-HATCHET. <laughs> Judge Hatchet is about to make her ruling. Ito says that he was emphatically told that he had to walk the dogs twice That's a day. A you're saying that it was a lie. The question is, what happened that day with this leash? I cannot find that conclusively, that he acted in such a negligent manner that the dog ended up getting hit. I think it was an unfortunate situation. I think the collar obviously didn't fit appropriately. But whether he acted in such an irresponsible and negligent part that I could say, Ito, you are absolutely responsible for this dog getting hit that day. I, Miss Ray, cannot find that under these circumstances. I can't find that under these circumstances. I do think that the equitable thing to do in this situation is that there should be some adjustment on the amount of money that you pay to him in this process. And therefore, I'm going to make an adjustment down on this matter. I'm going to take a portion of what you gave him, and I am going to deduct it from the um, fee that is owed to the veterinarian, and so I'm going to deduct $100 out of the fee that you paid him to watch these dogs, and I am going to enter judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $415, which is $100 less than the medical bill, because I think that there is some responsibility. I just can't find that you acted negligently in a way that caused this dog to be injured. The good news, as difficult as this is, the good news is that the dog survived. I am going to dismiss your counterclaim in this matter since I've made the adjustment on the bill, enter judgment for $415. There's nothing further. We will stand adjourned. Thank you.
people of Jamaica invite a weary world to share our blessings. Because we know that even a few days with us will do your heart good. Come revive your spirits. Just look how easy we have made it for you. I did dog sit for them in the past, and uh, the only way I would dog sit for them again is if they let me take that frozen dog out of the freezer and do a little barbecue. Yes. Stop it. All it's right. all right, honey. It's okay. It's okay. What the Honey, I hate them. They're all here. Why did you say that's going to stay with me a long time. And I hope, I hope they show that because... There are bad people in the world, unfortunately. If you've been seriously injured in any kind of accident, you may be confused about your rights. Some insurance companies may say you don't need a lawyer. Some are quick to offer a settlement in their best interest. Before you sign something you don't understand, call the Injury Helpline. Talk to a lawyer near you for free one who will explain your rights. The insurance companies have lawyers working hard on their side, and so should you. Call 1-800-343-7001.